Yes, yeah, so end of sentence, which is uh, written by Michael Armbruster and uh, directed by Elva Adelstein, who, as you pointed out, is Icelandic. Um, John Hawkes, Logan Lerman are a strange father and son, Frank and Sean Fogel, the latter of whom has been serving a stretch in prison. And while he's in prison, his mother dies. He comes out. He's unhappily reunited with his father. And then he reluctantly agrees to accompany him to Ireland because it was the deathbed request of his mother that her ashes be scattered on a lake. So the setup is as clunky as anything. It's okay, these two characters who are estranged, we're going to stick them together, we're going to, you know, send them on a trip to Ireland. And initially their relationship is really kind of tetchy, and then they meet up with uh, Sarah Bolger's jewel, and then the frostiness seems to thaw. And then you seem to get the kind of standard off the, you know, off the peg movie bonding, albeit temporarily, but the bickering still goes on in the car. Here's a clip. I was like 15. My friends and I we took his car out for a spin. He called the cops, reported it stolen. The cops got us in two minutes. Threw us in jail. Everyone's dads came within the hour. This guy, 24 hours. His mother was in the hospital again. I was dealing with that, trying to deal with him. That's right, that's right. I'm the cause of my father's nervous breakdowns. Well, I'm sorry, because I, I didn't say it. It wasn't a nervous breakdown. I was doing the best I could during a very difficult time, but my son couldn't grasp you that. To the authentic he wanted Clark Kent for a father. Radio uh, had Clark Kent, wanted Superman. Well, and we just wanted a good son. So is the interesting thing about End of Sentence. We, we sort of talked about this a little bit last week when you were talking to John Hawkes. I mean, this film was made a while ago. It was at Edinburgh in 2019. So it's, you know, it's been around for a while. Um, the, the, the setup is very formulaic and you can, you know, you don't have to be a, a movie genius to understand at the beginning that what's going to happen by being stuck together in, in a car is that they're going to have that kind of, you know, road movie coming of age bonding and, and that gradually they're going to learn at least to begin to overcome their differences. The interesting thing was that this came the week, uh, a couple of weeks after um, Wild Mountain Time, which was just, just horrific, a kind of, you know, Americans viewing Ireland as a theme park, despite the fact that, you know, it's a, you know many people that were involved in, in that production, it has the, the, you know, on film board behind it and all the rest of it. So in comparison, this did seem to be very restrained and um, it's low key, I think, John Hawkes is the kind of main reason to see it because I think his portrayal of a man who is picked on by his son for being weak. I mean, you talk to John Hawkes about this. It's interesting that the dynamic is the other way round. Again, you'd expect it to be the father being the the bolshy, confident character and the son to be written, but it's the other way round. It's the father who's on the back foot. And I think that John Hawkes does something which is quite hard, which is to play a character who appears to be weak and play them in a sympathetic way that shows you that there is there is something much more complicated going on underneath. The only thing I would say is, we sort of talked about this briefly last week, but there is a scene in which they go into a pub and that is the theme park moment. Oh. And they go in and suddenly there's a lively band and they start playing Dirty Old Town and immediately Jewel, who's the one that they've, they've kind of teamed up with, is invited to sing along and lo, she sings along while, while everyone, and you just go, okay, you, you just lost me. You, you, this is the point at which you just lost me. And I, I know that some people have referred to that scene as, in fact, funnily enough, in the press notes, it talks about, you know, that was one of the scenes that we, you know, thought was the most important. You know, no, it, that's the cut your lovey sequence. It's terrible. It's terrible. It, it is, though, isn't it? It's just like, oh, yeah. come on. Wouldn't it be great if that scene, <laughs> you know, with just moratorium on scenes in which that happens. You don't, because, and it also, you don't need it. You know, no, there are other ways no. in which, you know, the characters become more rounded and so on, because there's a lot of edge there uh, going on. But, you do, you know, you don't need to sing. Cut that no, out. No, and it goes on, the singing goes on for quite a long time. And, um, and it is kind of like, yeah, okay, I know, I know, yeah, I know where they are. Thank you, thank you, move on.